Hello and very warm welcome to all of you on the special podcast series by me emotionally yours with pratik my name is pratik surana and with me i have got a very famous uh, indian film star ms minakshi sheshadri a very warm welcome to you minakshi ji on this podcast emotionally yours where we talk about emotions and its impact our idea is to make people aware about their emotions and we are very glad that we are accompanied by you a very warm welcome to you on the show thank you so much pratik i'm glad to be here and as i was saying earlier this is a milestone for me today because i have never ever been part of a podcast before well, i'm so glad that we you chose us for being a part of this podcast being your first podcast um we we truly honored so do we begin our podcast let's go ahead great so the first question that i have for you is let's talk about emotions and their impacts on your various uh, career and life choices that you had well everybody knows that career wise i have been a dancer and an actress and probably everybody knows that in terms of life choices maybe one of the biggest choices i had to make was a personal life choice about my marriage mm-hmm. so i will talk about both these things sure uh, when it came to my career choice the emotion which i think drove me towards it was love mm. and this was the love and passion for fine arts and dance which was part of my family background my mother was my guru my mother was my teacher in both music and dance my siblings themselves were involved in fine arts so i just had this amazing atmosphere at home which nurtured my love dance and acting were a daily occurrence and i never thought that uh, it would take me beyond the stage i just said ki main ek teacher banungi ek dancer banungi and that would be my profession wow. but dancing on stage was a confidence booster it uh, it gave me uh, a personality reaching mm-hmm. out to audiences and changing my persona on stage ki har jagah pe you have different audiences and their uh, expectations are different catering to that mm. so uh, that was a path which just somehow took me towards what else can i do on stage and the next thing i did was join a beauty pageant ah and the next thing i knew i was miss india 1981 and being offered a movie to perform as an actress so you see that career choice it was not conscious i did not say mai ek actress banne wali hu that choice came to me because of that love and that passion which was in within my personality my psyche from childhood wow and um the next choice that was major in my life was who i will marry or do i want to marry mm-hmm. do i want a significant other in my life and uh that happened again it was driven by love and uh, i know we have spoken about this that love starts from acceptance of oneself and another person right so you unconditionally accept and then respect and that flows into this deep love Lovely. and i met my um, uh, husband to be in the usa and whatever i had grown up with had given me these values and principles these guidelines these convictions and i just found that compatibility in my life partner wow so i think that's how it works for most people i am able to articulate it because you forced me to think about it <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that was a lovely force i would say that force to think about the love force to think about the passion so the prominent emotions that i hear in uh, the things that you've described so far about passion for art passion for dance yeah. passion for you know being in beauty pageant winning the title in 1981 I mean, many accolades have followed because you followed some 
important emotion called passion right and then came love so passion love for what you do and energy these are the things that those have been the driving emotions would that be appropriate to say that these emotions have been very instrumental in uh, making the career choices that you had because be it career be it life choice as you rightly explained about the marriage choice or you know various choices you could channelize these emotional energies in your favor would you agree with that you know we come into this world mm -hmm. with nothing right correct and we are shaped and molded and changed and we many of us have even metamorphosized ourselves to mm. you know over the course of our life path and yes i agree all these emotions uh made me and made me derive this personality for myself mm. and it's a learning process i'm still changing uh now i'm actually back after 27 years again pursuing the same passion for dance acting in today's times and uh look at it how things have changed how circumstances are helping me today people are talking about it the web is proactive in throwing out these messages mm. there are gurus such as yourself oh, oh i'm on it thank you <laughs> who are helping people like me uh actually look at it with that kind of focus ki are ha yeah this is the emotion which is making me do this thanks thanks for the honor mm -hmm. uh thanks for the kind words i would say and i feel that you know one has to really recognize these emotions and as as we all say age is just a number so 27 years doesn't really matter as long as that passion that love for what you do is alive kicking and getting you going excellent that has given us a lot of insight about love passion and how we recognize these emotions as our driving force all right so moving on to the next question now so that's really interesting that we spoke about passion love and we're moving on to the next question which obviously makes me think that you could reason with these emotions you could see them as a guiding force uh, my question to you is why people normally don't reason out with these emotions and why it is important for anybody to understand these emotions and reason out with them so if you could just elaborate a bit in terms of you know why it's important for us to be in touch with our emotions reason them out in terms of where we going and how you were actually reason them out okay i can start from where i learned how to reason out my emotions and for me it was very simple it was handed to me on a platter training of my emotions training of how to deal with them recognize them because of what i did my mm -hmm. dance my acting those were two specific uh training areas and professions which demanded that i show emotions indian classical mm. dance shows abhinaya all the time that is the one of the main focal points and a good performer is not considered great unless she knows how to have control over all their expressions and the emotions and convey it to the audience similarly mm. with acting तो मेरे साथ यूँ हुआ कि आई जस्ट फेल्ट दैट आई वॉज इन कंट्रोल ऑफ माई इमोशंस रादर दैन दी अदर वे अराउंड दैट द इमोशंस आर इन कंट्रोल ऑफ कंट्रोलिंग यू एंड ये दिस आर्ट विच वी हैव इन इंडिया द क्लासिकल डांस फॉर्म इट्स दिस नॉलेज ऑफ इमोशंस इज इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इन टू इट इट्स देर इन द ट्रेनिंग इट सेल्फ एंड आई थिंक दैट्स अमेजिंग एंड i think one of the reasons why people in india um love music and dance so much is because it is so closely linked to emotions lovely yeah and um when i came into the movies mm -hmm. give, let me give you an example of how my emotions 
I was not able to reason through some of my emotions, despite all my training. Mm. I was young. I was 17. I was not confident that I could navigate the movie business alone. Ah. There was a fear emotion. There was an apprehension, worry. I was a 17-year-old girl in the studios. Go to makeup rooms alone and talk mm. to uh, males alone in their company. I was not ready. The anxiety. The anxiety was there. So I reasoned with it and I came up with a solution which I literally forced down the throat of my family. Mm. Ki I insist that one of you has to accompany me when I go to the set, when I go for outdoor shoots. Sure. I am not mature enough to manage this career alone. Mm. So, uh, and um, believe me, until, until my 30s still, I decided that I was ready for marriage. I mm -hmm. so actively sought that support and it slowly bolstered my courage. Mm -hmm. And then the fear element actually went away. So today I'm again going to be in that same movie business and I will not have my family with me, but I can handle it. Lovely. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is being passionate, being, uh, you know, affectionate, loving. Mm -hmm. I mean, those emotions we spoke first, then we spoke about anxiety, fear, and seeking the support of the family when it is needed. So you exactly knew when to seek the support. Mm -hmm. That's probably the right kind of emotional maturity at that age without probably, you know, during our teenage, we may not realize it, mm -hmm. but we carry that emotional maturity in mm -hmm. ourselves. And that has guided you to, you know, take a decision where uh, you will be accompanied by a family member when you mm -hmm. visiting various people during your initial years and onwards mm -hmm. till then. And th now you've overcome that fear because you could reason out with it at that point of time. And most importantly, the art form, mm -hmm. that was the triggering point. With, without making you cautious and conscious, it actually ingrained that element of emotions through Abhinaya and various dance techniques. So um, I'm really amazed how art helps you in reasoning out with your emotions. And uh, right from art, practicing it passionately, passion, love for art, onwards till at reasoning with anxiety and taking the right decision at that point of time. So all our decisions are, uh, do they do have some element of emotions in them. Yeah. And sometimes it really depends on how we make them work for us and mm -hmm. not against us. Is that what uh, you would want to speak about? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we all want our emotions to work out for us. We all mm -hmm. want our lives to be a success story, not just in terms of profession, but as human beings. You want to feel that in Hindi, that my janam is hai. Mm. Which is not just spiritual, but you know, it's uh, what I need to realize as a human being is that I am in charge. Self actualization mm -hmm. is very close to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. So that was really, really insightful. Uh, in the next question that I have, and this talk has ignited uh, my mind to ask you a further question on the same. So we spoke about. Uh, you know, reasoning with your emotions just now, where you spoke about overcoming anxiety, overcoming fear, and then when you are going to be back again, you've addressed them pretty well in your stride and you've made those emotions work for you. But I'm sure there would be moments where there would be confusion, emotional turmoil, moments which are not very happy, yeah. uh, emotionally draining out, we would like to know how you overcame them over the period of time and how these emotions guided you. Um, I think it's impossible to have a human life without challenges. Absolutely. So that's a given. And I 
have had turmoil both in my professional and personal life. And I will give an example from my professional life. Mm -hmm. I had an interesting career. I was, you could say, one of the well-known and uh, actresses of my time, and I did well. But something very strange happened in my career graph. People tend to appreciate you more because people are judgmental, J for judgmental, mm. that if you're doing well, everybody will say, wah, wah. But you have this uh, situation uh, which I went through where so many of my movies in a row flopped. Mm -hmm. Flopped matlab how? Terrible flops. Really? Yes. So uh, there was a lot of commercial failure uh, which I faced as an actress. And uh, they say you're as good as your last movie. So I was as bad as my last 10 movies. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, it was bearable to me because uh, I've always been a pretty satisfied and strong person emotionally. But then it got worse because the press joined in. Mm. And uh, here came the next J. J for judgmental led to J for jinx jinx uh, jinx i was titled and labeled the jinx and uh, all newspapers all uh, magazines uh, even in the movie business mm -hmm. people started saying are wo to panwati hai usko really? film mein mat lo yes my so, god yes that was um, an extremely excruciating process of few years that i went through must be very, very painful. It was painful. But look at the beauty of it. The top producers and directors still approached me and still signed me for their movies. Wow. So something was weird in that whole equation. Mm -hmm. They had not given up on me. But the, in totality, filmmaking is not one individual's contribution. It needs this whole big team and everything has to come together for the film to be a success. And that... Collaborative effort had not worked for me for a few years. Mm. So cut to the next phase when in a row I have four mega hits all within one and a half years of my career span. And uh, I was a little mad at the people around. Mm. This is something I would normally not do emotionally. I tend to be quiet and... I do not point fingers, but I did at that time come out and say, "Agar ab sochte hain ki wo sari filme meri wajah se dubi, to ye sari filme meri wajah se chali." Wow! And <laughs> you put the right logic there. Though. I put the right <laughs> logic there. So I reasoned with my emotion, and I right. said, "I said, well, by that same logic, you know, you have to give me the full credit." <laughs> so. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, that that did make uh, quite turned uh, people. Absolutely. <laughs> so J for judgmental, J for jinx, mm -hmm. and then overcome with all of these, with your hard work, with your efforts. Here, what I have sensed is, you know, success is pretty relative. And as you rightly said, Ukte with Suraj Ka Salaam, mm -hmm. uh, one just needs to be emotionally matured and resilient through those times. That particular emotion called resilience, I can really, really see in it. So uh, when, you know, you came up, even the agony that you had, the rage that you carried within themselves, and mind you, all of these are emotions which are termed in a negative manner. Though they could be rightly channelized when you said and when you came up saying that mm -hmm. now I need to be credited just the way I was discredited termed, discredited or termed jinx mm -hmm. all right excellent so what happened next then <laughs> uh, well uh, what happened next was uh, I was at the top of my game and I I felt this emotion of love drive me again and I moved to 
becoming so passionate about all the things that I loved mm -hmm. that I simultaneously started doing movies, returning to dancing on stage, classical mm -hmm. dance performances all over India in all the major festivals, and back to my education again. I had done my BA while acting. I, after a gap of seven years, I again went back and did MA. Wow. So ye, I'm, what I'm trying to get across here is that that love and that passion gives you that sense of self. It, Ki, this it, is what makes me tick. Mm. This is my purpose. And everybody said, hey, Meena, she, ko kya ho gaya hai? why is she trying to do multiple careers? Why is she trying to study again? Wo padhai se kya ho mm. And uh, my only answer to everybody was, Ki, this is it. I mean, I have found my... Passion again. I have found... What do you say? The good thing. The secret. The secret behind what I am supposed to do and what I am supposed to be. I have found it. Hmm. And so I'm pursuing it. Awesome. Yeah. We started our journey with passion, love for art, then went into you know, anxiety, fear, again, agony, rage, and now again back to passion, mm -hmm. which made you not only do multiple things at the same time, but succeed in them. Okay, so mm -hmm. from J to J to, you know, S, <laughs> that's, that's a very, very interesting journey. And, uh, you know, this is something that really uh, kind of, you know, makes me strike a chord. I have also done my BA, and by the way, I dropped out of engineering to pursue my BA, which was very unthinkable during those days. So, mm -hmm. you know, here I completely agree with you in terms of the passion that one has, the kind of, uh, you know, love and conviction that comes naturally out of it. Mm -hmm. So excellent. Great, great to know about this, how you overcame these moments of confusion with equal amount of conviction and belief in yourself. That's excellent. So we'll move. Uh, I, I have another question. So, uh, you know, one thing that uh, I always wanted to ask, and this is something different people have different coping mechanisms, techniques in terms of tough decisions to make, in terms of dilemma, in terms of emotional overwhelming, so on and so forth. So which techniques really worked for you? You understand that you've come from, uh, you've come from art. You've come from various other backgrounds. So, are there any techniques? What works for me is journaling. So, I normally write down all the thoughts, emotions, etc., and that helps me when I look at it later to mm -hmm. navigate through it and reason with myself. So, is there a technique that you follow? Before I talk about any techniques or mechanisms, I want to make an honest confession. Please. I have always had a big struggle with making choices, mm -hmm. uh, making decisions in areas that I'm not very familiar with. Okay. Uh, I have led a sheltered life mm -hmm. and uh, growing up uh, in Mumbai with the film industry or in the USA after marriage, I had to do many things which I had to be individually capable of dealing with those situations mm. that I had to make these choices or there was a dilemma. And uh, I wouldn't really know how to do it. One of the reasons behind this, I'll tell you, is because I came straight from 12th grade into movies. Oh. So I never had a college life. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not have friends and peers of my age. That can make a big difference apart from family training to uh, gear you up on how to face life. Oh, yeah. You know, fr friends can really, you know, be very helpful in, in getting you to a place where you know that in this circumstance, I can do this. So when I had to do something which was unfamiliar to me, I did two things. One, I had to cope with my anxiety. Mm. Uh, I would feel hot, sweaty, flushed, uh, 
panicky breathing, all that stuff. So mm. first thing straight away I would go to would be my breathing exercises. Okay, deep and breathing exercises. Deep breathing exercises. I had to do that and that's my lifesaver even today. Mm -hmm. Because even now I face situations where I get nervous. Mm. You know, maybe it's not turmoil or dilemma, but it, it is... A little nervousness. Maybe. Nervousness where I don't know if I can handle it well enough. And my breathing exercises are such that I can do them anywhere. You know, <laughs> I can yeah. sit anywhere and do it. Nobody will know what I'm doing. And yeah. they really work. They were given to me by my music teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use them, especially when I have to do public speaking. Mm. I was very nervous about talking in front of audiences. Mm -hmm. And I actually joined a leadership training um, uh, program in my school because I wanted to overcome that. Okay. Okay, so um, today I can address millions of people in, in outdoor events and, you know, nothing phases me. But that was not the case once before. And apart from that, the other thing which helps me is my acting and dancing background again is role playing. Role playing? I, yes, I become myself and my inner voice, like two characters oh. talking to each other. And I guide myself through a situation ki what will work for me? How can I do it? What would be the steps? Do I need outside help? Whatever. Um, what changes do I need to make so that I can handle it? That I don't feel scared or I don't feel uh, in ineffective. And that works wonders for me. I have passed that on to a lot of people and uh, they say that it helps. It is like journaling, but instead oh, yeah. of putting it down on paper, I'm saying, saying it out. It loud. Saying it aloud. So more of it is like self-talk. Self-talk. All right. Yeah. Self-talk is really, really important when it comes to understanding your emotions. And self-awareness, as we always say mm -hmm. in emotional intelligence terms, mm -hmm. is the factor that would get you to reason with the emotions. So it's like, you know, I always say it and, uh, that... 80% of emotional intelligence is about yourself than about others. 80% mm -hmm. of emotional intelligence is knowing the emotion mm. before regulating it. And emotional intelligence is a skill that one has to practice for a very short time called his lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so Nice one. <laughs> so that's how, you know, we, we carry our emotions because we all are emotional beings. Right. Yeah. Then later on, we definitely try to navigate through, rationalize and mm -hmm. do things. But the self-talk, deep breathing, I strongly recommend. And thanks for these wonderful insights. Now let's talk about something. So we spoke about a lot of emotions, emotional intelligence. We spoke about guiding through emotions, etc. Let's talk about a few incidents which were really, t you know, where you felt that you, the emotions guided you in the right manner. For example, earlier we spoke about uh, addressing your anxiety by taking a family support wherever you visited. In the same fashion, we would like to know a few more things about how emotions guided you in the right manner. I'm going to give you two examples. All right. For convenience sake, I will call it a micro example and a macro example. Wow. So the micro example was me as a schoolgirl in Delhi having this insatiable need to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I've always had this feeling within that I want to leave the world a better place mm -hmm. than when as I know it. And that led me to adopt my maidservant's daughter for a period of one year. Wow. Now, when I say adopt, I didn't pay any money, mm -hmm. but I gave her my services. Mm -hmm. So these were the following things I did for her. I, I worked on her personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. She had a head full of lice. Okay. I, I personally took care of that problem. Wow. Made her cut her hair. Forced her to have a bath every day. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, land up at her house and make sure that she was doing it. 
she mm. she I was probably 15 and she was probably 9 oh and uh, I got her some old clothes of mine gave her those I got some basic books for her for reading and writing she did not want to go to the government school which was being run close by the corporation school i insisted that she had to join and i bribed her with sweets mm and i would go to the school i would meet her teacher um um i would see uh, what she did every day because she, she would come with her mother Mm-hmm. Uh, because her mother came morning and evening to our house, I would check her books, see she was doing her homework, mm. and I—I uh, I have to be honest, I didn't do this totally on my own. In the sense, it was part of the leadership training program. I was—they—they oh, they had I was participating in it. They had a requirement that I had to show leadership in some way, mm. and f- so for me. the emotion i think that drove me to do that was wanting to see somebody else also fulfilled mm. wanting to see their life that they they do not have access to it but can i be in some way an instrument influencing them in the right manner influencing them and the best part of the story is it doesn't end there after that one year mm. i came back from mumbai and i went to my old apartment Nebuhu. where we lived and i tried to find her i couldn't find her, her family her house nobody knew where she was i went to that school ah where she had studied and i was shocked because she was a teacher there wow that actually displays the leadership in action yes and this but that i did not do she did hmm. that I was just the impetus, but she carried it forward and right made the choice. Uh, I'm, I I can't tell you. Uh, I think I think that is one person I've influenced, <laughs> at least That's I can say that. Such a beautiful example, Minakshi ji. Mm-hmm. You're talking about making a big difference in somebody's life who was not well kept, who was not uh, taking care of herself. to the extent that she is leading a successful life not only that she is probably influencing a lot of children in her school mm-hmm. through what she went through and the right values that you incorporated in terms of you know creating a drive in her and that's where the positive influence using emotions work mm-hmm. you displayed the compassion you displayed the love affection Mm-hmm. and the sense of making something work mm-hmm. okay you we call fancy names in the corporates now at corporate social responsibility mm-hmm. etc but at the age of 12 you were 12 or 15 15 15 you said so at the age of 15 you already started practicing that and made a huge difference so you know hats off to you for this lovely uh display of the leadership so leadership in action doing servant leadership in in its right sense in making the uh, difference in somebody's life and influencing them in the right manner thank Great. you thank you all right so the macro example oh, i'll yeah. try to be quick about this this was related to my personal life okay i reached a ripe age in my 30s when i felt i was ready for marriage mm-hmm. and the person i met and who i felt was the person who was uh, i i needed to you know choose as my life partner lived in usa mm. so here is again the turmoil the choices uh, the the incident or or the event of choosing a life partner Mm-hmm. Uh, which was forcing me to question what my life would be from then onwards quitting the movie business quitting india uh quitting being close to my family and friends um quitting my comfort level and uh putting full trust in a completely new relationship mm. and sticking with it and saying yes i will do it So I think what helped me deal with that was ek to I had a lot of stability in my life mm-hmm. through the love and support of my family and friends all along. I had a lot of stability in as a good successful film career. Mm-hmm. 
so i was like why not i think i can do this i i i i met the person i want to be with so thoda planning kiya okay i will teach i will dance i will perform dance in the us i may not be able to requalify myself and do an office job mm-hmm. but i will make a future for myself there so i uh, thoda strategy kiya and it worked out fantastic so you know love makes you do many things and i can see that you've really done uh, all those things that to get the love of your life and as you speak i can see the love in the eyes and the expressions when you speak about your partner your husband excellent and that macro and micro examples tell us a lot about the emotions and guiding them in the right fashion at the right time so hats off in terms of making those choices and how emotions have guided you so that makes me think about something else so as we spoke about various elements and you know there was this wonderful micro and macro example that you'd given in terms of leadership uh, i'm sure there would be these kind of moments of achievements uh, like you said about leadership development and things uh, where you know the emotions navigated what question that comes is i'm sure there would be moments of distress uh, success failure so on and so forth so i would want to understand how you really did during those times yeah i don't think i need to talk much about success because success speaks for itself true and i have been fortunate to have people respond favorably to me as a person as a dancer as an actress and and hopefully in my uh you know avatar as uh, american <laughs> society oh. member accepted in that melting pot mix right you know where it's it's, it's a very different scenario where you're not just among south asians and indians you're among so many global nationalities but uh, failure is something which people don't want to talk much about mm-hmm. except maybe they say oh you have to fail uh, of uh, fail several times and that is how you get success to ye sab sunne ko milte hain to i uh, don't know if i can qualify this as a failure mm-hmm. but definitely as a uh, s- something which could have been a severe setback to me personally mm-hmm. and professionally okay so in the 90s i did a major movie i will mm-hmm. not go into the film title mm-hmm. what happened was due to some extreme reasons i was asked to leave the movie leave the movie my services were no longer required ooh and uh what followed after that what transpired after that was uh i think made me really change as a person mhm um the press was after us hounding us ki ye kya ho gaya hai kyun ho gaya hai it became a huge controversy mm. um there were talks of having me replaced by some other actress mm. uh, the big uh, organizations of the movie business which is the producers association directors association writers association actors association got involved mm-hmm. it, it became a uh, something which people had to whatever decision was taken would become like uh, uh, would set an example mm. for the next mm. generations ki agar aisa ho jaye to kya to kya how to deal with it mm. what was the right way what's the wrong way uh, i kept quiet through the whole process my emotions told me that i had done nothing wrong mm-hmm. so if if there had been a genuine mistake on my part i would have accepted it apologized completely and profusely mm-hmm. but at the same time i decided not to point fingers Mm. I decided not to say ki so and so was wrong and I am right. Mm-hmm. Uh I just let things flow. And I think sometimes with emotions that's necessary that you mm-hmm. don't try to control them. You give them a free rein and let them find their path like a river. 
Wow. Which cuts through the mountains and finds its path and nobody is directing it, but it finally lands where it's supposed to. So that happened and ultimately everybody came to support me. And you kept quiet and you I didn't raise quiet. voice till everybody gathered to support you. Yes. Excellent. So my thought process was, I will accept whatever happens, mm -hmm. but my silence will speak volumes. Mm. And uh, when the whole unit decided to uh, ask me back to act in that movie, and then the movie was completed and released very successfully, I feel all of us involved were very satisfied with mm. the choices. And um, that's what I wanted to share. Wow. So this tells me that, you know, sometimes people are not real or nice, but you have to keep quiet and sail through rather than react spontaneously at that moment. So that element of spontaneity was replaced by element of regulation at that moment. Would yes. that be uh, the right analogy? I agree. Right. So... A big takeaway that I'm taking from this is silence at times speaks volumes and one has to give that time mm -hmm. for, as, as you rightly said, the emotions flow like a river, mm -hmm. all right? And one has to let that stream flow to see the, clear, clear, you know, to get the clarity, right? Seeking clarity is very, very important in mm -hmm. such places. I would... Uh, now, you know, one thing that came in to my mind is fighting this was something that you did on your own and, you know, it paid off splendid. And I'm sure later on those people would also agree that, uh, you know, it, it went well. Uh, you spoke about being in U.S. Uh, last time. One of the pro predominant emotion in most of the Western countries, including the U.S., which is a melting pot, as you rightly said, is, you know, this great sense of loneliness that I see whenever I meet people, I speak to them, etc. And that sense of loneliness is very, very difficult to deal with in terms of emotions. You know, they will, uh, they would like to come, have, say hello or namaste, and then you strike a small talk, etc. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy in the Western world, all right? So how you kind of manage this? I had a tough time assimilating myself into U.S. society. Mm. For one thing, I was not in mainstream workforce. I was right. sticking to my South Asian music, dance, and so the people I met within that realm, other South Asians, Indian families, that was fantastic. That was mm. great. The challenge came when I had to interact with um, people who were non-Indians. Mm -hmm. um, somehow I did not have enough of knowledge, practical general knowledge of American society and uh, mm. you know, because I was not born and brought up there and I just faced this uh, uh, wall sometimes you know, when I was trying to communicate with people that mm -hmm. I felt I was not getting through. Okay. And uh, by the time I decided to come back to India, which is now, things changed. I mm -hmm. realized that many of my son's friends mm -hmm. who he really got along well with, their mothers became my good friends. Oh, okay. And I also figured out the reason why is because the the emotions and the value systems somehow coincided. Mm -hmm. There was male khara tha, mm -hmm. and uh, we could talk about all the typical things, servant problems, oh. <laughs> the latest clothes in town, Achha. and so uh, ek. Uh, a seamless communication where wow. you know you don't feel ki this is a person from originally from Germany, this is somebody originally from Venezuela. Though nothing seemed to matter after that. Mm -hmm. um, though loneliness, I think you have to work on it. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and if you reach out to people mm-hmm. you'll realize that they want to reach out to okay so it's mutual but at the same time who blinks first who blinks first who takes the first step who takes All the right. initiative so taking the initiative for fighting the loneliness i'm sure when you interacted with uh, your son's uh, mother who were part of you know his friend circle the uh, children did you feel that this happened mostly because of the common value systems and emotional compatibility that you had absolutely i think what happens is we are individuals mm-hmm. but once you get married and have a family mm-hmm. that becomes a common area for all of us all right you know society family these are all like institutions correct which uh, allow us to integrate better with each other hmm. so it was that's how it was excellent so that's you know those of you who are staying overseas this is a very very important input reach out reach out if you feel lonely reach out to the people blink first there's nothing wrong break the ice excellent now we would move to the last part in which i would i may want to have a couple of uh, questions and understanding more about your emotions and you know the way you overcame it so minakshi ji we have spoken a lot about our individual emotions etc let me put a bigger question in front of you we all are part of the society i mean uh, we all have different roles like you are in Uh, your profession i am an entrepreneur somebody would be uh, you know serving some forces and so on and so forth so collectively as a society what do you think are the emotions that we lack in or we really need to improve on i am asking this question from a perspective of our quantum foundations uh, mission 1 million project where we talk about 1 million emotionally literate indians by 2035 so i have seen that people really are not aware about their emotions but uh, on a larger perspective as a society what are the things that we lack in and we need to improve on i have discussed this with my family mm-hmm. <clears throat> um so firstly i feel mankind is careening towards this place in kalyug mm-hmm. where he's actually losing a connect with emotions mm-hmm. and actually moving away from understanding that emotions are the only way you can function that is the only way things can work out mm. so there is apathy apathy that's an important word don't don't really care not really concerned not really moved mm. bothered not bothered uh, so this is distressing mm. because this is what leads to conflicts wars non cooperation and i i keep thinking and having bad bad thoughts in my head of end of the world you know mm. I, i mean i go i go that i almost go into catastrophe mode and say ki ye duniya ka kya hoga agar log aise honge ji and of course the other key word is which you you work on very actively which is empathy uh i, I think people are more willing to accept things and work with you if they see the color of money oh so empathy वो क्या चीज होती है वो क्या जानवर है यू नो सो पीपल रियली नीड दैट एजुकेशन आई एम सो ग्लैड यू आर मेकिंग दैट अ गोल एंड मोर पावर एंड सक्सेस टू यू फॉर दैट थैंक यू आई विश आई हैड मोर आंसर्स टू दिस आई थिंक जितने भी पेरेंट्स हैं ना अभी दे हैव अ बिग रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टीचर्स So if you cannot work at the level macro of government and uh, unicef or whatever then you have to work at this level mm-hmm. ki mm-hmm. log apne bachcho ko ye de rahe hain these skills mm-hmm. which are so necessary for us as humans mm-hmm. if we are to mm-hmm. survive for several more centuries <laughs> agree 
Uh, empathy is something that we all need to really work on in terms of, uh, you know, why do I care or, mm -hmm. you know, from there to I'm also part of the society. I also need to contribute and understanding the other person. That's what we speak about being empathetic. And you spoke about something really, really important in terms of roles of parents, right? So I would want to understand, uh, as parents, we have a lot of emotions of, uh, attached to our children, and that reflects in the way we are parenting, right? So parenting style and emotions, this is something that I would want you to speak a little more. How crucial are understanding these emotions in yourself and your children when it comes to being a parent? We learn to be parents a lot from our own parents and grandparents and ancestors. Mm -hmm. And maybe seeing other parents in other families. Mm -hmm. So my parents, my mom was very hands-on. Mm. And she was not only my mother, she was my teacher in music, mm -hmm. my teacher in dance, and she was my agent. My whole movie career, she managed. Wow. She was an exceptional woman. So I don't know if I could incorporate all that in what I gave to my kids. Mm -hmm. Definitely, my daughter did not want to learn Bharatnatyam. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but uh, I think my kids taught me a lot because they were born in the USA and grew up there. So I changed my whole attitude. I said, let me learn to look at things from their perspective, from their eyes, from their lens. And they were very proactive in telling me how they wanted to be parented. Oh, Believe me, yes, my kids, I'm so glad they had the voice to tell me when they felt I had gone wrong, why mm. I had gone wrong, why I could have done something different, how they would like me to handle their issues. And I think that is a little unfair, but my kids wanted that responsibility. They wanted it to be a more equal relationship from a very young age. That's really interesting. It is interesting. And uh, I let it happen. Instead of being ki, jab tak tum 20 saal ke nahi hote, jo mein kahun, wohi hoga. Uske baad, you develop your individuality. That has not happened with my kids. They have mm. uh, their own strong <laughs> mind. So jokingly, I always say mm -hmm. that it is the child who parents the parent more. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I definitely can relate with what you're saying, uh, being a parent myself. Uh, you know, and, and I completely understand from where uh, you're coming because you were a parent of a child when you were 15. Okay, when you adopted that neighborhood girl the maid's daughter and completed her entire transformation all right now the same thing that you're giving freedom to your children okay that's where i can see the reflection all right excellent and uh, it was lovely lovely talking to you and uh, keep watching us on emotion i'm going to interrupt ah really Really, Sorry. I have to say one thing. I can't, I can't let you complete it without me saying this. All right. Because this is my dialogue to the audience. Wow. <laughs> Please go ahead. So I have been very fortunate that being an actress dancer has shaped me, shaped my emotions and given me a lot of power to deal with myself. Correct. And I have this beautiful quote which mm -hmm. goes like this. What is the definition of an actress? Definition of an actress. Yes. So this is something about emotions, but in a mm -hmm. different way, looking at it in a different way. So an actress is a person who is sugar and spice and everything nice on the outside. Mm. But inside, she is cement, cement, concrete and stainless steel through and through. Wow. So I think this means that you have to make a fall, make a fall. It's not that you are cold or 
रफ हो गए बट यू बिकम मोर कम्प्लीट विद इन योर सेल्फ एंड गिव योर बेस्ट फेस टू द वर्ल्ड दैट्स अ वेरी वेरी पावरफुल कोट ओके सीमेंट स्टील कॉन्क्रीट फ्रॉम इन साइड एंड शुगर एंड स्पाइस ऑन द आउटसाइड एक्सिलेंट कोट that tells a lot about internalizing the emotions and then coming up really strong all right it was lovely lovely talking to you and it was really nice getting candid i loved this conversation i'm sure you uh, must have liked it too all right <laughs> of course it has been an absolute pleasure all right so you know emotionally yours with pratik so thank you very much it was lovely talking to you this is a small token of our appreciation a small gift for you it was really nice and may i request you to sign this mug for you your autograph please okay my name is really long so let's see <laughs> no problem i'm <laughs> sure we have enough space there <laughs> Okay. So that's it. Ah, Meenakshi Sheshadri Mysore. All right. So it was Meenakshi Sheshadri Mysore with us. It was lovely talking to you Meenakshi ji. and uh, many thanks for coming up on the podcast and uh, keep watching this podcast emotionally yours with pratik more coming up thank you very much